A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens Stave 2 The First of the Three Spirits Part 1 The curtains of the bed were drawn aside. Starting up into a half-recumbent attitude, Scrooge found himself face to face with the unearthly visitor who drew them. It was a strange figure, like a child, yet not so like a child as like an old man, viewed through some supernatural medium which gave him the appearance of having receded from view and being diminished to a child's proportions. Its hair, which hung about its neck and down its back, was white as if with age, and yet the face had not a wrinkle in it, and the tenderest bloom was on the skin. It held a branch of fresh green holly in its hand, and in singular contradiction of the wintry emblem, it had a dress trimmed with summer flowers. But the strangest thing about it was that from the crown of its head there sprung a bright clear jet of light by which all this was visible and which was doubtless the occasion of its using in its duller moments a great extinguisher for a cap which it now held under its arm. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? I am. Who? And what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? No, your past. The apparition motioned to the window and it magically dissolved. It then pointed to the skies, much to Scrooge's distress. <gasps> I'm mortal and liable to fall. Bear but a touch of my hand there, and you shall be upheld in more than this. As the words were spoken, they passed through the wall and stood upon an open country road with fields on either side. The city had entirely vanished. Not a vestige of it was seen. The darkness and the mist had vanished with it. For it was a clear, cold winter's day with snow upon the ground and a chilly breeze in the air. Good heaven. I was bred in this place. I, I was a boy here. You recollect the way. Remember it. I could walk it blindfold. These are but shadows of the things that have been. They have no consciousness of us. This school is not quite deserted. A solitary child, neglected by his friends, is left here still. Why, it's Alibaba! <laughs> it's dear old honest Alibaba! Yes, yes, I know. One Christmas time when yonder solitary child was left here all alone, he did come for the first time just like that. <laughs> oh, poor boy. I wish... What is the matter? N nothing. Nothing. There were some boys singing a Christmas carol at my door last night. I should like to have given him something, that's all. Let us see another Christmas. Dear, dear brother, I have come to bring you home. Dear brother, to bring you home, home, home. Home, little fan? Yes, home for good and all, home for ever and ever. Father is so much kinder than he used to be, that home's like heaven. He spoke so gently to me one dear night when I was going to bed, that I was not afraid to ask him once more if you might come home. And he said, yes, you should, and sent me in a coach to bring you. And you're to be a man and are to never come back here, but first... We are to be together all the Christmas long and have the merriest time in all the world. You are quite a woman, little fan. Always a delicate creature. She died a woman and had 
as I think children. One child. True. Your nephew. Yes. Let us go now to a certain warehouse door. Do you know it? Know it? I apprenticed here. And who is this? Why, it's old Fezziwig. Bless his heart, it's Fezziwig alive again. Ho, ho there, Ebenezer, Dick. My boys, no more work tonight. Christmas Eve, Dick. Christmas, Ebenezer. Let's have the shutters up before a man can say Jack Robinson. Clear away, my lads, and let's have lots of room here. Hilly ho, Dick. Chirp, chirp, Ebenezer. A small matter to make these silly folks so full of gratitude. Small? Why? Is it not? He has spent but a few pounds of your mortal money. Three or four, perhaps. Is that so much that he deserves this praise? It isn't that. It isn't that, Spirit. He has the power to render us happy or unhappy. To make our service light or burdensome, a pleasure or a toil. Say that his power lies in words and looks and things so slight and insignificant that it's... It's impossible to add and count them up. What then? The happiness he gives is quite as great as if it cost a fortune. What is the matter? Nothing in particular. Something, I think. I should like to be able to say a word or two to my clerk just now. That's all. My time grows short. Let us visit another Christmas. A Christmas Carol, adapted, directed, and produced by Paul A.T. Wilson. Narrator, Paul A.T. Wilson. Scrooge, Oliver Fry. Ghost of Christmas Past, Jake Brading. Fan, Neve Hunter. Fezziwig, Paul A.T. Wilson. Music, David Pudney. Sound design, Paul A.T. Wilson. This production is published under the International Creative Commons Attribution License Version 4. Copyright 2021.